Hey everyone, my name is Krissa and I am excited to take you on a tour of Hamasasa Springs, which is one of the most unique springs that I've been to so far as it includes a whole wildlife park. So if you're looking for a nice relaxing place to take the family, I'm going to go through all of the details of Hamasasa Springs to see if this might be a good place for you and your family. So let's get into it. Hamasasa Springs is a Florida state park that is located on the west side of Florida, about an hour and a half north of Tampa. Hamasasa is open every day from 9 a.m. to 5.30 p.m. We visited on a beautiful Sunday morning and parked at the visitor center entrance of Hamasasa Springs. There are two separate entrances for the park. There's the visitor center that has this giant manatee statue in front, which makes for a great photo op. And then there's the wildlife center, where the main bulk of the park is located. Once you get inside of the visitor center, here is where you can pay the entrance fee for the park. But there's also a gift shop here, as well as Pepper Creek Restaurant, where you can grab either breakfast or lunch. If you have extra time to explore, there's a timeline that runs all along the back wall that goes through the history of the spring. It's a really great way to pass time if you're waiting for the next boat to arrive. There are also a few different options to get over to the wildlife park from here. The most popular way is to take the boat tour. There is an extra fee for the boat tour, which at the time of filming was $3 per person. The boat leaves every 30 minutes and runs until 3.30 p.m. On this tour, the boat captains will provide an introduction to the park and tell a little bit about its history on this 20-minute boat ride. But if you don't want to pay the extra fee, you can always take the tram over, which will drop you off right in front of the park. If you don't mind the walk, you can always walk the same trail that the tram uses. It's about three quarters of a mile to walk the path from the visitor center. If you do choose this route, please know that you will be sharing this trail with the tram that comes back and forth from the visitor center. Homosasa has been a tourist attraction since the early 1900s. At the time, trains would stop to let passengers walk the trail to the spring while the train got loaded with cargo. During this time, the park also operated as a place for animal actors to be trained for movies and TV series. But today, the park is owned solely by the state of Florida and operates as a sanctuary for animals who were unable to survive on their own in the wild. Once you arrive at the west entrance, you'll cross the street and enter the West Visitor Center. You do have the option to park your car on this side of the park if you prefer to just skip the travel from the Visitor Center altogether. The entrance on this side of the park contains a gift shop and a small concession stand called the Wildlife Cafe. If you didn't pay the entrance fee at the visitor center, you can always pay the entrance here or just show the stamp that you got when you paid at the other entrance. Once you're inside the park, there are two trail loops to explore. If you head to the left, you'll walk around the Springs Loop, which is a beautiful half mile walk around the main spring head. If you head to the right, you'll make your way to the Wildlife Walk, which is a half mile loop where you'll get to see all of the animals that are currently residing in the park. If you first make your way around the Spring Loop, you'll encounter some bleachers, and this is where you'll catch the daily educational manatee chat that happens a couple of times throughout the day. During this chat, you'll get a chance to learn more about the manatees than you'll ever probably have before. And the chat lasts about 20 minutes and is led by one of the park's volunteers. So once you arrive at the park, you'll wanna make sure that you ask around to find out what time the show happens if you do wanna catch it while you're there. From the bleachers, you'll get a great view of the main spring head. The main spring head is the largest out of the whole Hamasasa Springs group, which includes nearly 30 springs. 
One of the unique features of Hamasasa Head Spring is that the main event flows from three different underground points that has different salt content and water quality. The three sources blend together in the basin of the spring before heading into the spring run and into Hamasasa River. Because of this, Hamasasa Spring is filled with a variety of both saltwater and freshwater fish species. While you're here in the area, make sure that you explore the Fishbowl Underwater Observatory. There's an observation deck on top, and if you go down these stairs, you'll head into the Underwater Observatory where you can see fish and maybe even some manatees up close. Unfortunately, it wasn't cold enough during our visit to see any manatees while we were here. However, there are manatees in the Manatee Care Center that are protected in the spring all year round if you do want to see any while you're here. Once you're finished exploring the underwater observatory, you'll walk into the Discovery Center. And to be honest, there really isn't a lot to see here, but there is a fun manatee fountain in front. And if you go inside, you'll find some restrooms and a place to rest if you want to just get out of the heat for a while. If you do want to learn more about this spring, there's some stories about the history of this spring as well as this Native American canoe. Just behind the Discovery Center is the Garden of the Springs area, where you'll find a quiet area if you want to stop for a picnic. There's also a river overlook here where you can look out onto Hamasasa River. And from the looks of it, it did seem like a very popular place to hang out for the local boaters. And while you're in the garden area, don't miss the little turtle exhibit that features a number of freshwater turtles that are also tucked away in the back of the garden. Once you pass the Garden of the Springs, you'll follow a boardwalk that runs along the river which makes its way to the Manatee Care Center. Here, you'll be able to see the injured manatees who are cared for until they're ready to get released back into the wild. While you're here, don't miss the manatee feeding that happens about 10 minutes after the manatee chat. Manatees have always been one of my favorite animals and I could just stand here and watch them for hours. After you finish with the spring loop, the first animal that you'll encounter on the start of the wildlife walk is Lou the hippo. Lou is the world's oldest hippo in captivity at the age of 63. He was born in the San Diego Zoo in 1960 and was moved to Hamasasa Springs in 1964. He was one of Ivan Torr's animal actors and starred in a few Hollywood films and TV shows. In 1989, Lou was made an honorary citizen of the state of Florida and has remained here ever since. While you're visiting Lou, you may notice that he has a splatter zone. And you'll want to stay clear of this area if you see Lou kicking his feet and backing into this area. Or you may just get an unfortunate spray which will keep everyone away from you for the rest of the day. Also in this area is the Gator Bite Snack Stand where you can stop and get snacks, drinks, or even some ice cream. Directly across from Lou is the American Alligator Exhibit. Alligators love murky water, and you should be able to see them swimming through the algae, but you can also catch them alongside the enclosure here. Continuing down the boardwalk, you'll also see some beautiful white-tailed deer. There's even a deer overlook that takes you directly into the deer habitat. Unfortunately, they were all hanging out at the opposite end of the enclosure while we were there, so we weren't able to see them up close while we were at the overlook. When you walk back from the overlook, you'll see a small enclosure to your left where you'll find the cutest little burrowing owl that you'll ever see sharing his space with a few tortoises. Also here are a few mischievous river otters who were really difficult to capture on camera. 
These otters are here because people tried to make them into household pets, and so they lost their fear of humans and never learned how to find food or develop the social abilities to fit in with other otters in the wild. Just past the otters is the reptile house, and this house contains a bunch of snakes that are native to Florida. In here, you'll find a few rattlesnakes as well as a cottonmouth. I'm not the biggest fan of snakes, so I didn't really stay in here very long, but if you have any fans of reptiles, they'll definitely want to head in here. Once you get past the reptile house, you'll come across Pelican Island on the right hand side. On the opposite side of the pelicans are two male bobcats, Tank and Tony, who were also taken from the wild as kittens and illegally declawed. Without claws, they can't survive in the wild, so they're unable to be released. We weren't able to get a good look at them since they were in their little house, but we could see these little ears peeking out from behind the hay. Next to the bobcats are the Florida panthers, Yuma and Sakata. Yuma and Sakata were abandoned as kittens and rescued and raised by humans. And since they never had the chance to learn how to hunt on their own, they're also not able to be released into the wild. Since both of the panthers are males, they are rotated daily in the exhibit, since they can be naturally territorial. Once you pass the panthers, you'll make your way to the aviary where you can find a collection of spoonbills, storks, and double-crested cormorants. Next is Maximus the bear. Maximus was born in the wild in February 2019 and abandoned by his mother for unknown reasons. He was only four pounds when he was rescued and despite the best efforts of his caregivers, he unfortunately imprinted on humans and is now unreleasable. After Maximus are the birds of prey where you can see crested caracaras, red-tailed hawks, and bald eagles. On the other side of the birds of prey is where you'll find the large awaiting birds like flamingos and the whooping cranes. We caught the flamingos during feeding time and was able to catch this pesky little vulture trying to steal a little bit for himself. Next are the two Florida foxes, Glory the gray fox and Swiper the red fox. These foxes were illegally removed from the wild by people who wanted to keep them as pets. So like many other animals in the sanctuary, never learned how to survive on their own. Last but not least are Jester and Rose the Red Wolves. These two wolves were born in captivity and are part of the program to protect endangered and threatened species. Through captive breeding programs like this, they are really hoping to build a healthy and genetically diverse population. If you are planning on visiting Homosassa Springs, here are a few things to keep in mind. Homosassa Springs is a wonderful way to spend the morning or the afternoon. You'll definitely want to allocate at least a few hours in order to properly experience the park. When you arrive, you'll want to make sure that you ask about the times for the manatee educational chat and the feedings if you do want to catch that during your visit. The boat tour is really nice, but it can get kind of crowded. On the way back, we opted to ride on the tram, which was a lot quieter. So if you prefer to stay away from crowds, I highly recommend taking the tram versus the boat or just driving yourself to the other entrance. The last boat leaves the west entrance at 3.30, but the trams continue running until beyond the park closing at 5.30. But make sure to double check the park hours on the day that you plan to go. If you would like to get more ideas of beautiful springs to visit here in Florida, then you'll want to check out my playlist that just popped up on the screen. In this playlist, I'll take you through a number of different springs here in Central Florida and beyond where you can swim, kayak, and explore. Until next time, everyone, I hope you have an amazing day and go out and enjoy some Florida sunshine.